Uh, good afternoon. So my topic for this week is uh, education from the poorest region in the world. And when we say poorest, we all, all, almost always think of Africa, and that's where um, I'm going to go. And especially, um, my focus is uh, usually uh, is mostly the girls' education in Africa, and um, in the topic of edu under the topic of education, I chose health education because in Africa, as we know it, there are uh, serious matters because of HIV, AIDS, and mm -hmm. other diseases. Um, so before uh, going into the topic, um, she was uh, she's called uh, she her name is Park Hyejin, and she's a nurse who volunteered for Koika. Um, in Ethiopia and so she was a school nurse there for about two years and I had the chance to uh, meet her um, and during my class and what she basically done, uh, did in Africa was to teach children about sanitation like health how to be clean and um, the basis is that most of these children in Africa, they don't even know how to use bathrooms. So um, all these the like, UN and other donors, they uh, contribute a lot of money to build like schools and facilities for these children. But the thing is, um, what she said was that she saw uh, children pooing next to the toilet because they don't know what the toilet is, even if it's there. So she had to teach them from very basic um, health uh, knowledge and um, that was very interesting because uh, a lot of volunteers spent a lot of years in Africa teaching children and even adults about health issues. So um, my t uh, specific topic is girls in Africa and their health education and also um, I focused more on this menstruation issue, what we call it as um, there are many different words for period, bleeding, um, something else. And then, um, so this is a huge issue in Africa because um, it has various problems, and I'm going to explain those problems and how our education on um, health issue is going on in this society. So first problem is the barrier to education. Actually, this um, issue blocks uh, the girls from going to school because they, since they don't have um, like proper pad or a preparation, they just miss school when they are in during period. So there was a survey, um, does menstruation affect you while you're in school? It was done in Uganda. And most of the girls said it, yes, it does, and they um, usually they just miss school. And the next problem was uh, health and sanitation, of course, because um, instead of pad, um, because they don't have pads, they use toilet paper or towels, which is okay. But um, sometimes in the poorest regions, they use leaf. Um, newspapers or even just mud, um, mud kind of materials t instead of the pet. So it's very um, serious issue there because we cannot imagine us without like pet tampons or anything. Um, so and also the problem of attitudes and culture um, is there in Africa. Um, oftentimes. There are discrimination between men and women in some countries in Africa. So when girls have period, it's considered like the curse from witches in some tribes, but it's not true. And uh, but they get like uh, separated from society because of those. Um, so it's a very serious issue in Africa. So. Um, what kind of uh, solutions are there? Actually, um, this is called She 28 campaign. It's 28 because the, the period, um, the duration is 28 usually. And there's a campaign going on between private um, corporations like Yuhan Kimberly, the toilet paper <laughs> company, and then other international companies as well. 
and they teach these children in Africa to make uh, self-made like, pads with fabric so they can use um, constantly and then wash it and then reuse it. And that's what actually the nurse, school nurse I talked about, Park Hye-jin, she did at school. She taught children, the girls, to make their own pad and how to use them instead of other like weird things. So um, my conclusion uh, here is actually from a snow lecture I watched. He's um, he his his name is Charles uh, Lee Peter. He lectured about um, the education from the slum, and he mentioned um, Rio in Brazil, the poorest regions in the world, Kenya. And basically, what he explained is that if the policymakers are the top. Uh, higher level of people want education uh, to actually take place in those poorest regions. Um, there should be like um, health education, government policies, and their education um, effectively like implemented into those societies. So um, I believe that. Um, we should also be aware of these kind of issues because even though we can't be a volunteer to teach children how to do um, become like clean and sanitary, we can contribute to um, like sending like pads or um, we can contribute in any other ways. So I thought it was very important.